Well, these things, I think originally, it's, a, uh, it's from the slavery days in the States when people would make their own instruments, you know, being dragged away from the native land, a little bit their own culture, so they'd uh, just uh, make their own instruments, make their own music from whatever they could find, whether it's a box that had got bottles of whiskey and cigar boxes, a good piece of skin or whatever. So uh, there's a guy in the States, a guy called Shane Spiel, started this sort of revival. It all happened online um, and I think you'd seen a magazine article from some you know like sort of young men's practical mechanics from the 1890s or 1870s or something how to make a cigar box guitar and you know and he, he did this and it worked and then he started broadcasting this out on the uh, on the internet uh, started this site called Cigar Box Nation uh, I'd, I'd started making these things before before then uh, but it's finding that site that really got me got me going but I mean I've always been into blues and that and you read the old-time blues man like was it BB King or Lightning Hopkins you read uh, when he was a lad he built a cigar box guitar from a yeah you know, cigar box and a broom handle and some wire off a broom and I used to think it's a bit of a nonsense it's a little folk story uh, but I think it was that then I, I just sort of I'll have a go and the trick to it was you made it with three strings like these things here um, so you you could you've got a chord you play it with a slide so you don't need to fret it so uh, and it worked and then I sort of found out about this stuff on on online and it grew Oh goodness me! I must have I must have started making these. Oh, I've got a log of when I did the first one. It's probably maybe about five or six years ago, I think, because um, I yes, I had sort of midlife crisis and I started playing the guitar again a few years ago. So uh, instead of buying, going out and buying a Harley Davidson or or whatever, <laughs> I started playing the guitar again uh, and end up for my own, for my own, own blues band. Um, and I was on the verge of buying a really nice guitar. I always fancied something like a Martin or something. Uh, and then I sort of saw uh, again the old blues guys playing ch cheap old guitars. So I bought myself a cheap old guitar from the states for about fifty dollars. And I started trading and selling those. And then sort of you read about the cigar box guitars. Thinking that's the ultimate cheap guitar, something that's made from something that's been thrown away. Um, so I started making making those. Made a couple quite liked it, sold one, made another, made another, made another, and here I am 400 plus guitars later, uh, making guitars.
Well, I've always always made my own guitars. The first electric guitar I had, I made at the woodwork shop at school. Um, so I sort of um, learned the basics there, and I've made a, made a few ordinary electric guitars for band mates and, and so forth. So as I've been fairly handy with tools, but with cigar box guitars, there's no set of plans. Uh, so you do have to learn it as you go along. So yeah, I just knew all it was was a box with a stick, three strings, and that's the, what all I did the first few words. It was just, you know, a stick put through the box, it works. And then the next one you think, oh, if I shape the neck, or make the neck a bit wider. So it's just a progression that each one you make, I think everybody who makes these things, and there's lots of people out there making cigar box guitars, um, you make one, and that's not going to be the last one you make. You're going to make another one because you think, oh, I can make that a bit better, make that a bit better. So the nice thing is, um, you don't really go and learn it. You teach yourself, and it's the same with the playing. I think it's one of the reasons why it's so popular, that you can teach yourself to make your own guitar. You don't need to go on a course. And it doesn't matter if you make mistakes, because that's part of it. And a lot, a lot of times you'll get a guitar, if you don't work right, you'd just take a saw to, saw to it, saw something off or take it apart and tinker with it. You wouldn't dare do that with a, a modern guitar, you know. <laughs> you just... <laughs> That's the that's the sort of finished finished article mm. cigar box with a that's fairly fancy neck that's that's lam, that's laminated about three pieces but whoop, here we go in true true blue Peter fashion is one I made earlier on but that's 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 my basic cigar box uh, and what I've done for this one there's various ways you can put the neck in but this is the way see I've actually cut cut out the base and the lid a little hole this is me this is my neck which started off just as a a stick of wood now I've got to do a little bit of cutting to get this to fit in so what I've done though is to make the hole so that will go in there but if we look that's too that's too thick so I've got to cut a I've got to cut a notch out the top mm -hmm. and just thin a little bit off there but once I've done that mm -hmm. I'll just cut that off with a bandsaw that'll slot into there and the thing will be I'll just put some screws through into the back. I'll have to reinforce inside this box though, stop it actually actually bending. And then the pickups, I usually cut a coal in the top and drop the pickup mm -hmm. into there. Fix the strings to the end with a simple bit of bent metal. Bob's your uncle, you've got a guitar. Well, <laughs> better work later, you got a guitar. Got to put a f Sometimes I do them fretless, but this one's gonna have a fretboard on it, proper frets, so you can play it not just with the slides, we can actually play it uh, properly and get chords and, and notes out of it. So there's a fair bit of work to, uh, mm. to, to be done to that. You can do those simple, you know, you, you, if you do it really simple with no frets, I mean, you can throw one together in a couple of hours. Obviously something like this, which you've got to shape, then they can do frets, takes a while.
Yeah, I mean, it's gone from making a few guitar, making a few guitars to now where I'm making. Well, I think the next year, uh, next 12 months, probably be looking at making hundreds of guitars. Um, it's I sell online and at guitar shows, and I see I can sell everything I can make. Uh, after just doing a show in Birmingham recently, that was, I wouldn't say it was our best show ever, but sales were up on last year. Uh, people are keen to get hold of them. Just before the show, I'd made a few, put them online, thinking I'd got a bit of stock, and they sold out within days. Um, so I think it's going to keep me busy. Uh, there's one, there were one or two shops interested in stocking them, but for me, that's a difficult thing. It's a nice, it's a nice to be asked, but by the time there's tax, profit margins and all the rest to be added by a, uh, a shop, it bumps up an affordable item to something that starts getting silly prices. Um, it would be nice if, people, if, if shops were knocking on my door asking to stock stuff, um, but it would be horrible to see the price virtually double through things like that, from go from what's been affordable. Plus I don't like the idea of somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Sally, you know, if I sell something it's 150 or 200 pounds and it appears in somebody's shop at double that, thinking, well, they've done nothing for it. Mm. And no, that's not quite, that's not, not quite true, but that, mo that money's hard won for me and it's not quite so hard won for the, for the uh, music store. And I don't know if I want to be in mainline music stores, if I can keep busy selling the cottage in classic cottage industry, working from home at my workshop, selling them online and face to face. It's uh, it, it's it's set set to get busier. Plus, there's a whole load of other stuff, sidelines, which I find bottlenecks. I can sell bottlenecks that are made locally by somebody. Books and components. Uh, it's a growing uh, growing thing. Imagine me, oh. 